Hello and welcome to Lois and Morgana Davidson Art. It's Morgana here and today I'll be sharing my method for painting this pair of handsome white egrets squabbling amidst the first flurries of new fallen snow. This painting was partly inspired by this pair of beautiful white egrets I saw recently. Sadly, I was only filming with my iPhone which certainly doesn't do their grace and elegance any justice at all. So for this painting, the first step is to lightly draw the outline of your birds using HB pencil onto your choice of watercolour paper. I'm using Milford brand watercolour paper here, uh, cold pressed, weight 140 pounds and size a quarter imperial. I covered the outlines with masking fluid and lay down some clean water across the entire piece of paper once the masking fluid has dried, ready to paint the background wash. I'm using a limited palette of four colours for this painting and the first colour I'm using here is raw sienna to put a lovely golden glow across the lower part of the sky. So I'm just brushing it lightly across the midsection of this painting. Next, I've mixed some indigo and cerulean blue on my palette and I'm using this to paint not only the rest of the sky but the water of the river as well, bringing it down to the lower part of the composition. The fourth colour I'm introducing here is light red, which is a wonderfully strong and rich rusty colour that I think works just beautifully against the indigo and the raw sienna. I'm using it at this point just to begin defining the land from the river using my one inch mottler brush. While the paint is still nice and wet here, I'm using my brush to create these loose spiky marks which are going to soften and diffuse into the wash as everything dries. These rough looking sort of loose shapes are going to turn into really nice simple background plants.
Lastly, for this stage of the painting, I'm going to sprinkle some fine table salt across the paper for that gorgeous scattering of winter snow. I left the painting to dry flat and you can see that the salt has bloomed out beautifully into this flurry of white snowflakes. So now it's time to add a little more detail along the riverbank before turning our attention to the birds. I'm going to keep using my sword liner brush, this is a size small, uh, just to add a little darker colour here, again sticking with my main colours of light red and indigo, which uh, incidentally make the absolutely one of the nicest greys ever when mixed together. At this point it's entirely up to you just how much detail you add here. You can always pop back and add a little more later if you think the area looks a bit sparse. Uh, I'm simply going to continue along the line of this riverbank adding some more simple reeds and rushes as well as a few plant details growing up out of the water. For now I'm happy with the level of detail I have painted along the riverbank so it's time to remove the masking fluid as you can see here and start working on painting in these birds. I always love to paint egrets and today is no exception. So I'm starting by painting the bird's beak using raw sienna. Recently I found that the simplest trick to adding definition into the egret's white plumage while still maintaining that lovely clean white colour is to work wet and wet, adding clean water to the area that you want to work in first as you can see I'm doing here with the head and neck of the bird. Then mix up a very pale colour using mostly water with a tiny dab of paint which works as a basic neutral shadow tone. So here you can use a tiny little dab of indigo or a tiny little dab of indigo mixed with the light red if you like. Um, this you can add in sort of small strokes of the brush to the white areas of the bird but the areas that you need to be slightly darker to create depth and definition uh, you can see here I'm using it to shade the tail area and around behind where the egret's legs are which would naturally be in shadow. Once you've done that, you'll find that for the most part, these birds practically 
almost paint themselves. I'm using this same process to add definition into the wing and the feathers here. Here you can see that I'm going back to add a little extra shading to areas such as this that need to be just slightly darker. Once you're happy with how the first bird looks, it's time to repeat this process to paint bird number two. You can see here that I've gone ahead and used exactly the same process that I've just demonstrated to paint this second bird using a very, very light paint to add definition and shading into the feathers and just around the areas that need a bit of shadow. Here I'm using a fine detail brush to add finishing touches to the bird's little round eye using indigo that I've darkened into grey by adding a small amount of the light red but keeping the paint very rich and therefore quite dark. I've used a lighter version of this grey to paint the bird's legs which I unfortunately forgot to film. To finish, I'm using pale indigo to add a little movement to the water where our bird is standing. And our painting is finished. Thank you everybody for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this video and that perhaps it has inspired some of you to go ahead and paint your own beautiful birds. If you'd like to see more videos such as this, you can sign up for my Patreon page by following the link below for even more tutorials. 
A huge thank you to all of you who have already done that. I am incredibly grateful for you all. But that's all from me today, so I will simply wish you all a wonderful rest of the week and very happy painting.